guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to attempt to make this top uh, this is a top inspired by Ariana Grande's outfit I'll be attaching some photos I first saw it on Marilyn Mello and I loved it I don't know why I didn't attempt it then but after seeing it on Ariana I was like I think I need to give it a try so this is how mine came out and I'm going to be walking you through the steps that I took to achieve this look. Uh, the materials that you're going to need for this piece are a ring. This ring is just like a, a kid's bangle because my palm can't go through. So a ring and then a four millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle, a pair of scissors and yarn and for the yarn I'm going to be using winter king which is a four ply acrylic yarn I'll be leaving all the details in the description box below this is the yarn that I'm going to be using for this tutorial and I'm going to be using one strand so I'm going to put this away so for this top we create petals around the ring if you don't have a ring you can use uh, maybe a magic circle I don't know really because I tried that and it didn't work out but maybe you can find a way to work around that um, we're going to start with the very first petal so grab your hook and your yarn you're going to start off with a slip knot This is my slip knot and you're going to make a chain of 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I have my 16 chains here. And you're going to go into the second chain from the hook so not this one but this one that second one and you're going to place a single crochet then single crochet into the next chain single crochet all the way down placing one single crochet into each and every chain And I've placed my very last single crochet into the last chain this is our very first row so you're going to row two and you're going to chain one turn your work single crochet into the very first stitch and all the way up one single crochet into each and every single crochet from the previous row Okay, so in this very last stitch here, that one, you're going to place three single crochets, one, two, and three. So now we are going to continue to place one single crochet into each and every stitch so we are at the bottom side of the chain and you you'll see those spaces below the chain 
you'll go into each and every space with one single crochet we are creating the cups at this point And make sure you go into the very last space with one single crochet. So this is what you should have. Now, for row three, because this was row two, the one that came around, row one. So for row three, you're going to chain one and turn. And you're going to skip the very first stitch and go into the second one with one single crochet. And into the next single crochets with one single crochet until you reach the exact middle so one single crochet into each single crochet until you reach the top of your bra cup so we have reached the three stitches that we created at the top of our bra cup. So we have one, two, and three. So in the first one, you place one single crochet. Into the second one, you place three single crochets. One, two, and three, all in the same middle stitch. And then one single crochet into the third. And then continue to single crochet all the way down until you have two stitches left. So I have two stitches left. As you can see, we have one and two. You're going to skip over this stitch here and go into the last stitch with one single crochet. Like that. So we are creating decreases at the base of our bra cup. So after that, you're going to chain one and we're going to repeat row three. Because this, uh, we are now going to start row four. And row four is going to be exactly the same as row three. So chain one turn, skip the first stitch single crochet into the next stitch and then all the way up until you reach the three stitches that were placed at the top of your bra cup So we've reached those three stitches, one, two, three, into the first, place one single crochet, into the second, place three single crochets, and into the third, place one single crochet. And then continue to place one single crochet into each and every stitch all the way down until you have two stitches left, just like we did for row three. So we have two stitches left, you can see this and this, so you're going to skip over this and go into the last stitch with one single crochet. So you can notice that the base of the bra cup has started slanting, that's what we want. So after this you're going to repeat the same exact thing for the next row which is row 5, chain 1 and turn, skip the first stitch, go into the next stitch with one single crochet and all the way up until you get to the three stitches at the top of the bra cup so we've reached the three stitches into the first stitch plus one single crochet into the next stitch plus three single crochets 
The second stitch is the middle stitch. So that's where you place your three single crochets into the third stitch, place one single crochet, and then one single crochet all the way down until you have two stitches left. So we have two stitches left and we are going to skip over the, this one and go into the last one with one single crochet. And we are going to repeat this row until you have a total of 15 um, rows. So right now I'm on row 5, I need 10 more rows. So your work will be expanding towards the top but decreasing on the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this same exact row that we've been doing until I have a total of 15 rows. Uh, for the bigger sizes, I would advise you to do some more rows for yourselves because this is coverage for a small to medium. So maybe for the larger sizes, you may consider about 18 to 20 rows. so that you get um, enough coverage for your bust. So let me go off camera and I work my 10 rows and I'll be back to show you how my bra cup will look like after that. Okay, so I have my 15 rows ready. Remember the first show is the one that just runs down. So I have Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And I told you for the bigger sizes, consider about eighteen to twenty rows so that you get more coverage because we are going to do identical pieces. You're going to repeat this same exact process for a total of six times so that you have six petals for your top and Remember, this is the cup that's going to go to the side of your breast. So make sure it's covering enough. So uh, you're going to go ahead and repeat this same exact process. After your 15th row, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. Leave a strand for attaching. And you'll do this for each and every petal. Make sure you leave a strand because we need these strands for attaching our petals together and also for attaching the petals onto the ring. So go ahead and do your six petals. This is one of them. So I need five more. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same exact process five more times and I'll meet you back when I have my six petals ready. Okay, so right now I have my six pieces. You should be having six pieces for your top, six identical pieces. This is what they look like. This is the pointed part. Now the side where I worked my final row will be my right side. You can see I ended on this side. This will be the right side of my work. So this is going to be the very first piece. Then that means this is the right side of my work. This uh, will be like this. We are going to be joining these stitches. Then I'm going to get another piece. This is the right side of my work. That means um, I place it like this. And then this is the fifth. Identify the right side of your work and place it like this. So this is the fourth piece. Then this is the fifth. Identify the right side and place it there. And then this is my last piece. Identify the right side of the work and Place it where it should be. This is what we have. 
Okay, so the whole equation is I have two at the top, then two that run to the side, and then two at the bottom. And you should see we have something that's lacking in between here. So, so I'll be using a simple ring in the middle here. And since uh, all my pieces are facing the right side right now, you can notice that you have a tail here to attach your work. And you also have here at this point, and then at this point, and at this point, and here, and here. These are the tails that are going to help us attach the petals together. So you're going to grab your tapestry needle and we are going to start attaching our work. I'll start with this petal here. The first stitch here, you're going to attach the first to the first here. All we are doing is to attach the, the stitches together on the sides of the two petals. So I am going to attach until I have three stitches to the middle stitch. I'll let you know where I stop. So I've joined until I have uh, one, two, then the middle, two stitches, one, two, then one, two, that's the middle stitch. So you just leave a few stitches to the exact middle of the petal because I want to create that opening on my ring so after this you're going to you're not going to join the two petals together anymore I'm going to just go on to one side of the petals and I just go into those stitches until I reach um, the top stitch and then I'll start attaching to the ring just go into the ring like this for a total of three stitches. Just make sure it's firm enough. You can go into the top stitches several times so that um, your work is secure because we don't want this ring to fall off our work. So this is what I have. I've just gone in and out of a few stitches at the top of the petal and after this I can remove my darning needle. I'm not going to cut yet because I'm not yet very sure of the final outcome. So now we have two petals joined. This is what we have. And you can see this is also going, going to create another whole design. Those gaps in between here. So we are going to get our second petal, grab that string, and do the same exact thing as we did on this one. So go into the first stitch with the first stitch here.
So this is what things look like right now. So when you have about two stitches left to the top, just like we did on the other side, we are going to go into this petal here. We are no longer joining them. Just go into one petal and then start attaching it to the ring. So when I'm attaching to the ring, I'm considering about two to three stitches, but attaching uh, those two to three stitches several times onto the ring so that it's secure enough. See what I've created? This is what I have. And it's the same exact thing that I have here at this point. We are still not going to cut our yarn. We are going to just remove the darning needle and start attaching the fourth petal because now we have three petals so far. So I'm going to repeat the same exact process. I'm going to speed through this. Because now you know exactly what to do. So Okay, this is what you should be having. So let me go ahead and attach these two as well. So following the concept, this can be the two at the bottom. This one is the one that goes to the side, so it covers your first breast. And then this one is one of the top ones, the ones in the chest. So that means we are left with the second one of the chest and then the one that covers the second breast. So. Okay, so this is how things are looking like right now. We've attached all the six petals. 
but we haven't yet gotten rid of these strands that we left behind so we are going to go ahead and do that because I'm pleased with the final outcome uh, you can see these gaps in between create those small uh, blank spaces that are also floral I'll correct this a bit because it has a very big gap compared to the others so I'm going to go ahead and correct that So that's the reason I wasn't cutting my yarn on the first try. Okay. So I want to go back to this point. So I'm showing you the whole process so that in case you experience the same exact thing as mine, you can go back and correct those problems. We want those spaces to be almost the same size so that it also creates another design altogether on the inside of the petals. So have this, this, and then I'm going to start attaching my petals. So I just went in one more stitch so that the gap was reduced a bit to match these other gaps that are around. You can see it's now smaller. So after this, we are going to start weaving in these ends. So I'll start with this one, this very one. I'll go down to the back side of my work and then turn my work around. And I'm going to start weaving in this end into several stitches. So just go into several stitches, we are just weaving in the ends. The moment you're done with that, you will cut your yarn here. And that means we are done with the very first one. And you can see we have the petal attached, but we no longer have the this tail hanging around. So we are going to go ahead and do that for each and every um, each and every loose strand using your tapestry needle. So So don't forget, you go in into the petal to the back side. So after weaving in all the ends in the middle, this is what I have. And you can notice that we've created another flower altogether. We have that flower 
which looks really cute on the inside because when the top is stretched out when worn everything will be emphasized will be more clear so after this we are going to create a border around our top as well as create loops where the straps are going to go so grab your needle your hook sorry your four millimeter crochet hook and we start on the border so you're going to make a slip knot and you're going to go at any point of your of your top i'll start mine from this point we're just going to clean up the edges of our work so make sure your work is facing the right side so we're going to do single crochet row a single crochet round around our petals so every space that you see place a single crochet and make sure these single crochets are not very tight leave uh, some room for stretch and i forgot to tell you you're going to lay your work flat like this and you know this is my top top right petal top left petal because when i'm wearing it and this is my right side it will be the other way around so these are my top two petals these are the side petals and then these are the bottom two petals so the bottom two petals and the side petals have to create loops at the ends where this strap that comes from the top petals is going to lace up so you can either create the loops on only the side ones so that you don't uh, put the strap in the bottom ones that's really up to you just like the butterfly top that i created some people don't lace up the uh, the lower wings but i'll be creating those loops and they'll be there just in case someone wants to use them so right now i'm just going into every space that i see with one single crochet make sure you keep the petals flat you don't tamper with the shape of the petals because if you make them too tight the petals may start folding So as I work, I'm weaving in this tail that I started with. And then when I get to the top here, I'll place two single crochets. I'm just trying to keep the petal flat. So two single crochets and then I'll chain three or five. Let me chain five. And then two single crochets into the next row one and two and you can notice that we've created a loop and then we are going to go all the way down whenever you find a tail like this make sure you walk over it so that we can get rid of it so this is what we have we've created a loop at this point so right now i'm working on one of the bottom petals and then i'll be crossing over to the second bottom petal so if it means you have to place two single crochets in a row just to keep the petal flat you will do that okay so we are at the, at the joining part of the two petals it's a bit folded but it's not scary so i'll leave it like that and i've placed my last single crochet on this petal cross over to the second one one single crochet and then go all the way up so 
So when I notice that my petal is folding a bit, I place two single crochets so that I prevent, I prevent the fold from happening. Okay, so I'm at the top here. I'm going to place two single crochets. <coughs> then chain five. I've created a second loop. So that when someone is wearing it, they can always lace up this part. So after your five chains, you're going to go in with two more single crochets. And then all the way down with single crochet stitches. Don't forget to weave in all the tails as you go. So this is what we have. So I'm going to do the same exact thing for the third one. But then the fourth won't have a loop because this is the top petal and it doesn't create a loop. This is where the first straps, the straps come out of this point and this point because they're the top two petals. So So since this is one of the side petals, because imagine if these two are the bottom ones, that means these are the side ones. We have to create a loop here and also a loop here. But when it comes to these ones, we won't create loops because they're the top two petals. Sorry. Chain five. So right now I'm working on one of the petals that doesn't have to have a loop. That means it's one of the top petals. So since the petals are identical, you just need to know which ones are the side petals. Any can be the side petal, any can be the top petal. So. That doesn't really matter. So I've created one, two, and three loops, and then this one won't have won't have a loop, but it will have a strap. So I'll put the strap later on. So I'll do three single crochets at the top, and then three single crochets into the next. So that we don't have a curve. I'm just trying to prevent the curve. So this is what you should have. And then go all the way down. And that means um, the next petal is also not going to have a loop. We are going to just do the same exact thing as this. So those will be the top two petals the ones that are above your bust. Right now you can see the two petals that don't have loops. I'm going to go all the way down and this one should have a loop because it's a side petal. So this is how your work will look like. These are the top two 
then the side two, then the bottom two. So I've finished working my last petal with the loop and this should be bringing you back to the point where we started this single crochet round from. So you can see we started from here. You will go into the very first single crochet that you made with a slip stitch and then you'll chain one and cut your yarn. Okay. So you're going to get your darning needle and weave in all your ends but at this point you only have this. Maybe if you have anything peeping just cut it off on the side and then stretch out your work so that it's flat. You remove all the tension from the border so that your work is more flat. So place your work the way you want it to be. These are the top two, these are the side two, and these are the bottom two. So you're going to get your darning needle and weave in this last end. Cut your yarn. This is the wrong side of my work. And then this is the right side. So you're going to get those points where you didn't create loops. And those uh, petals are going to get straps. I want my straps to be a bit thick. So I'll be using two strands. So I've just pulled a very long strand. You're going to identify the middle part of your petal, pull through, and then start making a simple chain of about, I'll let you know how many chains that I'll do, but you can notice that I'm using two strands so that the strap is strong enough. Oh, I did a total of 190 chains and I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the second petal that doesn't have a loop. So right now I have made two straps. I'm going to just tie a knot at the end so that I secure them. So after your two straps, you're going to turn your work to the wrong side. So the side where you worked your single crochet row is your right side. You're going to just turn your work to the wrong side. And the two straps should be at the top of your work. So you're going to bring this strap here, this one on this petal here, and bring it, pass it through the loop on the side, like that. Bring this one on this side, and pass it through the loop on the opposite side. So that will create an X at the back, just like we do for most of our tops. And then you're going to bring this one here through the bottom one on the opposite side. And then bring this through the bottom one on the opposite side. So this is how your top will look like at the back it's more like lacing up if you wish not to lace up these two petals that's really up to you but if you've laced them up then you'll have a knot in your waist area
this is where you'll tie the knot but if you didn't less the strap into the bottom petals you will have something like this at this point after passing it through the side petals you will just tie a knot and then that will create this shape and these two petals will just be on your tummy without being stretched outwards so that's really up to you you can do both ways and this marks the end of our tutorial i hope you guys had fun creating it thank you so much for hanging out with me and for watching this video i will see you in my next video bye